I'd like to show you some of the new features in Alias and VRED 2026, which will help your surfacing and visualization teams work more collaboratively together. A long time coming is the apples to apples same look and feel between both apps by sharing shaders, also called materials. Now you can set up a live reference to connect both and see changes you make in Alias happen live in VRED. I'll show you the basics on how to get started using this workflow, along with some caveats to be aware of. So looking at this wire file, I have just the body and glass components to a vehicle, and I have alias shaders assigned to them. Looking at this red paint, I see there are only four different shading types to choose from. This is different than the materials you'll find available in the VRED library, which offer a lot more material types with more realistic attributes that go with them. Same with the glass, there are the same four plastic material types. So if I look at how this save file would look in VRED right now, it's got that metallic car paint. It looks different than an alias, not consistent, and the material type is a plastic, not a car paint, with those attributes only for a plastic. So going back to alias, and in the shader libraries, in addition to the alias shader library that was available prior to 2026, there's now the VRED assets and the VRED user library. The assets are the ready to go VRED library materials that are categorized into different types like car paints and glasses and metals and so on. In order to see how they look, you need to switch from the alias renderer to the new VRED renderer. So I want to choose a car paint from the VRED assets. So I'll just grab this flip-flop, middle mouse it on, which will replace the current shader assignment. And I'll also go in with a more realistic glass for the windows. And when I take a look in the shader editor for the paint, you can see that all the attributes are grayed out until you click on the chain and give it permission to modify. Now I can change any of those attributes, such as the color. And if I have something I want to save into my custom library, then I can just rename it. And then go to the VRED user library where I can create my own custom folders and just drag it right in there as a new material. The environments currently are only in the shader library. So I'm going to drag Desert Dawn into my scene. And in order to see it behind the car, I need to go into hardware shading and make sure that show environment and show ground plane are on. So like the paint color, I'm going to pick my environment and I will drag it right into the environments folder under the VRED user library. No need for a subfolder. I want to create a camera I can look through in both apps synchronously. So I'm going to create a new camera and I want to change the name in the camera editor. I'll go to the drop down and choose camera two, call it my camera. And now I'm ready to save this file to bring into VRED. So I'll save it as test two. And I will want to turn on enable live. So let me resize both these apps so we can see them at the same time. And this time, instead of importing that file I just saved into VRED, you'll notice that there's a new module called Live Reference. Like any other module, click on the plus to add something to it, and I'll bring in that test two that I just saved from Alias. And I'll look through the same camera in both apps. In order to see the synchronization, you need to check on auto updates. 
And when I navigate an alias, you can see that it responds the same in red. Right now, to bring in the same environment, there's a little bit of a manual process. So looking in my asset library under environments, I need to reload the directories and it should bring in any new materials or environments I saved. Then I'm just going to drag it into my render port. You're not going to see it until I do one more step, which is to look in my materials, look at the environments in my material editor, and I just want to drag Desert Dawn into that switch and choose it as the active environment. In Alias, there's a new tool for modeling, and it's in the palette under Transform. It's called Soft Prob Mod. So to use this, I'm just going to show the CVs on my model. And then in the Soft Prop Mod, it's going to ask for the active CVs. So I'll just choose some of these on the roof. I like to choose the edges and enter when I'm finished with that selection. Then I can get a gradation or a fall off by choosing the passive CVs. So I'll choose some of these. Enter. And then as I transform them, you can see in red the updates live. So now it looks a little a bit, now it looks a bit more like my RX-7 with a little bit of detail in the roof. It's a nice way to evaluate your model using a, a render that has more realism and some more effects and options than you can get in Alias. So currently, besides the materials and the CVs that I showed you that do work synchronously with live update, some other things that work are both NURBS and SUBD objects and the transforms to those objects and components such as CVs, along with the shader and texture assignments, and also layer organization. If I were to change something in my object editor, you would see that change in the scene graph in red. Lights work except for linear and ambient lights. Animations and cameras, except for some features like f-stop, autofocus, and depth of field and ortho cams. Also annotations come over as well as invisible objects. Some things that don't currently work with live referencing is it's not bi-directional, meaning you can't make changes in red and expect to see them in alias at this time. Curves don't currently import nor do variants or markups or canvases. You should also be aware that VRED always wins, meaning if I make changes in VRED, then they're going to stick with VRED. Even if you try to make changes in ALIAS, you won't see them live update. So for example, I'm going to change it to a different material and I'll just bring up my assets. Let's see some custom materials I've saved that you can see in both apps. And I'm just going to drag this on. So now, if I go in red and try to change to a different material, going to my Visualize workspace, and in my VRED assets, I'll put on this flip-flop that's pink, and you will not see this update in red unless you choose to revert any changes you did in red by going to file reimport live reference which will undo all those changes that you did in red and you'll be back to where you are with either the saved alias file or the open live alias file here i have open a file in red that has a bunch of different components that are live referenced in an alias, I have one of those components, which is the body one that's currently being live referenced. 
Theoretically, alias, surfacers, or designers can independently work on these components, and then it can be compiled into a red scene. And as the alias designer saves a file, you'll get an alert in red so that you know you need to update the file. And this is nice because you don't have to guess which surfaces to delete and which to add back in. Also, the person working in alias can set up a live reference, whether it's in the master file with all the compiled parts or just that one part like I showed last time, and see how it looks with some more advanced rendering features without needing to do any more setup than has already been done in red. So again, I'll just make some sort of visual change so you can see the live update happening. And if you disable that live update, the file in red will revert back to the way it was saved. So I'll just re-enable that live connection and we're live again. The files need to be saved in the same location and have the same names for this to work. But if you do move a file, so I'll take this body one and I'll move it into a different folder temporarily. Then you can see here that the connection has been broken and this component is now in red. So if I make a change again, you will not see this live update. In the case that you do intentionally want to change the path or the file name, then you can reconnect it by going to File, Replace Live Source, and then navigate to where it lives. And again, you do have the live reference. So let me move that back so that all the files are back in the same folder where they belong. Which is going to break the connection. So I can tell it where to find it again. Everything is live and good. Now you'll notice that this body one is not green. And the reason for that is that I've got revision monitoring set up. This means that if the files are saved with a suffix of increasing numbers, then this will be recognized and alert you by turning orange so that you can import the latest revision in. And this is nothing new, but in case you're not familiar with this workflow, I'll show you where to turn that on. That's going to be in your preferences under Scene, and then References, Update Monitoring. Just make sure that's enabled and that you've got Numeric Revision on. So to change this out to a later revision, because I know that the alias surfacers don't usually save over their revised files with the same name, you're just going to go from the Scene Graph and right-click to References replace source, and you could either choose a direct file name or let it choose for you by going to revision. I'm just going to have it choose the latest file. And when you import, if you change the materials to preserve from scene, and you've done all kinds of material changes in red that you don't want to lose, uh, you could choose that option if you want to use the shaders coming from alias, then say use from file. And now I've got the latest version, which is 05. Everything is green. And if I wanted to set up a live reference, I would need to open that body 05 part in alias.